The question is, how can you be sure? Like, say you've had a bad day. How can you be sure you're going to heaven? How can you be sure that you're going to go to heaven? We, we, we believe that nobody can be sure because heaven is something that belongs to Allah, to, to God Almighty. Yeah. And it's God that judges the heart, God, God that judges your actions, the purity of your soul. And as a consequence, it's, it's his heaven to give to whoever he wills, right? Yeah. Now, a person could feel that they're doing what they're doing is very good and God is probably happy with me but that's, that does not necessarily mean what they're doing is indeed pleasing to God so it's not about feelings no, it's for sure, no, right? No, yeah. so how can, we, how can we know if we're on the right path? that's a very important question, right? No, yeah, it's a critical right, critical question because you'll find a person who worships a tree is very happy maybe and content worshipping the tree but you as a Christian and I as a Muslim Asalaamu Alaikum Alhamdulillah, you alright? You, you as a Christian and me as a Muslim we know that this is blasphemous, this is wrong and that this is idolatry, right? Yeah. and yet he feels very happy and content in what he's doing so the point is it's not about feelings in Islam we have a very beautiful concept called and it's how do we find the path to, to, to God, to the Creator? And you have to use both your aql, which is your intellect, yes. and the naql, which is that you just do as you are instructed to do by the Prophet, basically. You, yeah, so intellect and how you're instructed. Right. So uh, by imitating, by copying the actions of the Prophet Muhammad or, the, or, the, or where, whichever Prophet you were following at the time, right? Now, why do I say that? Well, the Prophet said, okay, you have to fast. And yes, the Qur'an says fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for people before you. Okay? And that Allah says that it is a means and it's a way to distinguish, differentiate which one of you truly have faith, taqwa, closeness to God, right? But I might not fully understand that concept, but it doesn't matter. It's still good because God instructs me to do it. The Prophet, peace be upon him, instructed me to do it. But the aql or the intellect part yeah. is very important as well. Yes. In other words, what are the criteria that are necessary for anything that is supposedly from God that it must contain and must be free of for it to be trustable? So for example, the Quran specifies that had this book come from anyone other than your Lord, surely within it you would have found many contradiction, many error, many errors. Yeah. So Allah is telling us, this is the formula, that any book that has many contradictions and many errors, it cannot be from the Creator. Yeah. Yeah. Alaikum Mansur. Sorry, so I didn't even see you. How are you, brother? You're okay, you're okay. Alhamdulillah. So, it, so... Oh, sorry. That's okay. Where is it? Sir, where? Oh, the whole book. I'll look at that later. Thank right? you. So, Allah gives us the formula in the Quran that if you find, if, if, if this book had many contradictions and errors, yeah. you could rationally, you could reasonably say that this is not either the literal word of God, it might, it possibly could have some words of God in there, but it certainly can't be verbatim the words of God because errors and contradictions are not something that God would do, God would make. No, I, do you know, I, I know exactly where you're going. This yeah. is, that, that, and, and I understand it. Yeah. I'm trying to get to this key, key, key question. Right. If I shoot you now, and I haven't got a gun in there. Yes. But if you go across the road and a bus hits you. Yes. How do you know that you're saved? But this is what you're, see what you're asking me is, do we have a guarantee that we will receive yes. paradise? Yes, yes. That's, that's and, and what I'm trying to explain to you is that just because I might feel that I have some guarantee does not necessarily make it true. That concept that I might hold, that by doing such and such or following such and such, I'm guaranteed paradise. That notion, that notion could be false, right? But how would you know if it is false or not false? Well, you're not going to know until you die. No, you could. Because I'll tell you how you, how you might know. You might come to know whether it's 
true or false, or whether it's at least questionable to believe it, as to who is making the claim. Who's told you this? Yes, yes, I right? agree with that. And the claimant, if it's God or a prophet, of course we would say that we, they, were, they, were, they would be trustable, but then we have to prove that they did actually say it, or at the very least that the message was preserved. Because if the message wasn't preserved, then I might be thinking that I'm following that scripture or that teaching which hasn't been preserved. Now, if it hasn't been preserved, it's the word of man. It's, the, it's a human being that's written that. Right, it's a human being that's written that. Now, if a human being is guaranteeing me paradise for doing such and such or such and such, how does that make it true? And so as a Muslim, the, uh, uh, as a Muslim, we believe that we live in hope of Allah's mercy and Allah's kindness. We do not think that we will enter paradise of, because of our works. In fact, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was asked, even you, and he said, even me, I rely on the mercy, the rahmah of Allah to attain paradise. Now, there's one very interesting thing, and I'll let you come back in there because you've been very patient. Why is that? Why is that that even the prophets would rely on the mercy of Allah? Now in the Quran there's something very interesting. It talks about Prophet Abraham. And it says, Allah says, he was grateful for some of the things that we gave him. What that means is, it doesn't matter what you do, you will never be able to be grateful for the entirety of the favors of your Lord that he has bestowed upon you. So for example, on the Day of Judgment, a person who spent all of their life in worship, Allah will place just his eyesight on one side of the scale and all of his good deeds on the other side of the scale. And the weight, the value of the eyesight will be heavier than all the good that this person has done. So we indeed rely on the mercy of Allah because we would never be able to... Oh, I didn't know this. So you do not believe that you're saved by, by, by works, by your good... So basically, as a, if I become a Muslim, I will basically do what I want, really. Then. No. So the works are a result of your taqwa, your closeness to God, and your obedience to God. They are a reflection of that. So for example, as a Muslim, if I stop praying, and I say, but I love Allah, I believe in God, I respect, I respect Allah, I'm thankful to God, I'm grateful to God. But my actions are showing something the complete opposite. Just like a father tells his son, you know, I've taken you out to Chesington, you've seen all the animals, you've had all... I you, you've, you're you're right, right, you've had your milkshake, you've had this, you've had... All I want you to do, son, when you get home, just pick up those five toys and put them in the box for me. And the son deliberately decides not to do that. You would, re you, you would reasonably think that's being ungrateful because the actions are showing something opposite to what a grateful individual would do, right? So similarly, uh, as Muslims, uh, gratitude of Allah is a result and will be a reflection upon how you lead your life. You can't claim to love Allah and then do as no, you no, please. I, I totally you, understand you understand my point? No, no, of course, I understand that. But I'm still trying to get to that. So, yeah, you can't. So, I would agree. You can't be saved by works. Yes. So, um, you're, what you're saying, and even even the, the best of your works doesn't, on the, that measurement thing doesn't. That's I right. I've got to tell Car my taxi driver, he's got it wrong. <laughs> yeah. But you're a top man. And well, I don't know if I'm a top man, but... I'm going to tell him because he, he's always telling me there's one angel on this side. Yes. And there's one, and they're, yes. they're measuring these they, angels. They do. That's, that's correct. That's and correct. Ten, I say, come on, hey, how do you know you're going to get to heaven, man? That's correct. And so is he, so he is correct. But he's, he's partly correct because Allah, because Allah says that you're good and you're bad, he's really weighed. Because Allah is just and Allah is fair. Yeah. And the, the good deeds, if they outweigh the bad deeds, through Allah's mercy, Allah's kindness, Allah will give you paradise. However, there are caveats. How, how does the weighing scale, how is it affected? The Quran says something very beautiful, that your actions are judged by your intentions. So now if I do good deeds to show off, then it's all in vain, it's lost. If I do it purely for the sake and the pleasure of Allah, 
then it's there is a reward in that so intentions are very important the sincerity of your actions are very very important okay and then with Allah's mercy Allah says if you've done more good deeds we'll give you paradise but even the one with the heaviest scale of sins it doesn't mean that automatically this person will go to hellfire we have a very famous story in the Quran of a, pro of a, of a woman uh, I, I can find it for you she's a prostitute so she's sinning all her life and then she's very thirsty so she climbs down into a well to drink some water as she comes out she finds a dog a thirsty dog so she has pity on the dog and she says just as I was so thirsty this dog is, is as thirsty as me so she climbs back down and with her shoe she fills up the water holds it in her teeth and she climbs out and she feeds the dog the water for that act alone, Allah forgave all her sins and gave her paradise. Wow. So this is, we, the, Allah's mercy overshadows Allah's wrath. And, and surprisingly in the Quran, Allah's mercy is mentioned exactly twice as many times as Allah's wrath is mentioned. Exactly. So, I, 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 could, I could ask you a million questions, but there's all these important people here who probably want to ask you some questions. But I still... I still, so if I get a gun out now and shoot you, I yes. wouldn't, because you're a nice guy and you're from yes. London. Thank you. <laughs> what football team do you support? I actually don't, I don't really support any football team. I you'd say Crystal no, I like actually, that. I watch a bit of this and a bit of that, but I'm not, not, uh, I don't really support anything in particular. Um, but I still, so we've got Alan, Alan's going to make this call on, of the course. works are going to be a part of it. Of course. But there's also Alan's mercy that's going to, that is going to be the... The mercy, without the mercy, the rahmah, or if I were to spend all of my life in prostration with my head onto the ground, I would not be able to pay Allah back just for the eyes that He's gave, given me. You know, in the Bible, so there has to be the mercy of Allah. In the, in the Bible, there's something that, that is um, quite interesting. There's a, a guy dying on a cross, and just before he dies, he comes, he says, Jesus, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. And this guy, let's just make it up. This guy's killed people. He's had sex and he says you'll see me in heaven today so what about as a muslim so so yeah jesus says you know today you'll be in paradise with me. what about as a muslim if you've done a thing, terrible muslim and you get to you know you're my age and you're going to die tomorrow and just at the last moment you said uh, Allah, i'm sorry it, it can happen it can happen because allah says that even if your sins stretch from the earth to the heavens and you turn to me with sincerity and you ask for forgiveness, I will forgive you. And the amazing thing is actually, there are three criteria in Islam to attain forgiveness. Number one is that you must be remorseful. You must regret what you did. You must have some guilt. I've, I've done this, it's wrong. The second one is that you must uh, make a firm intention not to repeat the sin. And the last criteria is to ask Allah for forgiveness with sincerity. If you satisfy these three things and you are forgiven and you return back Sorry, to the, the sin the to, to repent with uh, sincerity. Yes, okay. Now, if you were to return back to the sin immediately after and then once again you turn in regret and remorse and you asked Allah for forgiveness with sincerity, Allah would forgive you again. Okay. So we believe that Allah is most merciful. There is nothing that is more merciful than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What if you had a heart attack just before you were able to say it? So you just committed a sin, but you're just about to... And... Well, we now are talking into hypotheticals. And I think with uh, when we talk about Allah, when we talk about God, we should not uh, assume that we know everything. However, sure. how, however, what we do know is that Allah is most merciful, most kind, most gracious, and most loving to His creatures, to His uh, to His people that He's created, to all of the uh, uh, animals and, and and humanity, right? So Allah will treat him justly with fairness. So He may have done other good things in His life that may wipe away that sin, uh, or Allah, out of His mercy, may be pleased with one act that He has done that was so amazing. You know, that Allah may forgive all of his sins. 
but we rely upon the mercy of Allah but we do not and this is the thing this is the major difference you see you you mentioned somebody on a cross who said certain things now I would reasonably ask you how do you know he said that and you would say well I have it in the Bible Absolutely. Right? I've got the Quran, okay I've got a Bible, okay yeah. now but we have to be honest Acor oh, accord according honest. to <laughs> according to the 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 the, the, the most learned biblical scholars many of whom are evangelical uh, christian followers they they believe in christ they even believe in the crucifixion the resurrection but when they write books on history they accept that we don't know what what the words of jesus were we don't know uh, the disciples whether they wrote these things or they were anonymous in fact they say they were anonymous writers we have books that are written by multiple people my friend, I, next time I right. come here, I'm very happy to discuss more because okay. I could flick that all the way around. But of course, I understand. No, no. no but, but I am very, <coughs> I'm very grateful for what you share with me because that is very useful and helpful. Of course, I know we can come into the, and I'm very familiar with the discussion. You're familiar with that, right? But, I, but I'm, my my main question was because I'm trying to study is that I'm just the second time I've been okay. here, I've, and okay. I love Muslims, by the way. Well, Alhamdulillah, so, we love all of humanity <laughs> because so, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said. Yeah. You're not a true believer until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. Yeah. Now, many of the scholars have said that this word brother here is brother in humanity. It doesn't mean just another Muslim brother. So I should wish for you goodness the same way that I wish for me. Yeah? No, I think, so I've got a big heart with Of course I understand what you're going to say and I can get out my stuff and you can get out yours and all that and I can say, actually, Pat, let's just flip this around because there's a lot, as you probably know, about the Quran and, and it's all that. Alhamdulillah, but, there's but, no problem with the Quran. I, I can assure you, look, I'll tell you something now. If there were major problems with the Quran, I would not be able to intellectually satisfy myself that this is from God. Well, I, well, I I'll, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Because if the claim in itself, the book itself says that it has to be free from contradiction and error, if there are contradictions and errors, I would not be able to no, rationally accept that because those are contradictory statements. <coughs> now, similarly, as a Christian, <coughs> the Bible can only be truly representative of the Creator if those are his words. Yeah. And I, we can have a separate discussion. I'm very, very happy. Sorry, what was your name? Abbas. Abbas. Sorry. Abbas. Just remember no, Abbas. No, no, I'm writing it down. A, and you're what right. I want you to discuss, look, I'm a, I'm a bit of a baby as far as the Quran goes. I mean, I've been a Christian for many years and uh, and I am trying to study and learn more. And I do. God's just put a, on my heart. He's good. Muslims. And so I have, my, it's my duty to learn more. And obviously, you know, uh, I don't know enough about the Quran, that's why I'm You know, one of the greatest evidences for the preservation of the Quran is the manner in which we actually even record and recite it today. Yeah. We have tens of millions of Muslims who have memorized the entire Quran. Every Muslim here virtually will know parts of the Quran. Some will know half or a third or a quarter or a tenth or a twentieth because we have to read the Quran, recite the Quran in our prayers five times a day. Oh, I know you do. Yeah? yeah. Now, the month of Ramadan is coming in about two weeks' time. Yeah. At night time, we do a night prayer called Tarawih. It lasts for the whole month. It's about an hour long each night. And the Imams are going to be reciting the Quran for memory. They don't have a book in their hands. No, I know, I know. If they make an error, the smallest of errors, there'll be at least four or five people behind who will correct them. I've been in the mosque when right? this happened. Right. And I've, I've, yeah. Now so. that level of pre preservation, that level, that, that level of letters, a few letters or a letter or a pronunciation being corrected, I assure you, you will find that in no tradition anywhere throughout history. Now, now, the point is this though, right? How is it that the Imam and the people behind can correct a letter or a pronunciation? If there was any corruption early on, it is but reasonable that that corruption would have spread and the message would have been further diluted 
and there would have been many more versions. Well, I don't know. I don't know. His, I mean, when was the Quran written? Two hundred years after. No. After. So the first copy of the Quran, that the Mus'haf that was brought together, even though there were uh, many folios that were separate at the time of the Prophet's death, the first Quran was uh, uh, compiled by the first Caliph Abu, Abu Bakr. After the after the Battle of Yamama, within about within two years, within a year and a half. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my study because I like you, Abbas, and I've got. But what I've just got a great favour. Where is this story about this? I like this well. This story about. It is in the Quran. I'll find it for you. Because I want to look that up. I will find it. I hear what you're saying. I mean, I've heard. Yeah, it's 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 the authenticity of the Quran and the Bible is obviously key. Abbas, I've got to write your name. Thank you for spending time with me, Abbas. I appreciate that. I do. Uh... So, are you part of. What is this, what is this place? No, I'm. Uh... Is this part of... Are you here every no, week? No, not, not every week. We'll be here next week. I'm, I'm a part of a group called EF Dawa. Um, EF. No, I'm writing your name down. Yeah. Abbas. But this group is. The, the, the problem is, is there's so much stuff to study. You know, you're telling me uh, things, and it's like, oh my goodness. It's thing. true what you said about when we yeah. corrected. Yeah. Why right now? Just, Sorry, I, I, when I, you I, get corrected, when the imams correct, that's right. Especially in Turkey, yeah. yeah. Eventually, there'll be some problems. Always, he gets corrected straight away with the correct line. So I'm like, surely, if there was, even when you see Hatun come to different Quran, it's not a different uh, reading, it's a different accent. That's all it is, it's an accent. Yeah, but you've got to go back to the... But you're not changing yeah. the actual meaning. Yeah. But the way Hatun and Jay Smith make out is like, it, when you read it, you're changing the meanings of the word or you're reciting... So I beg your pardon, it's actually a hadith. Oh, it's a ha hadith, yeah? Uh, hadith is narrated oh, in some I books. I read hadith as well. Well, it's in Muslim and, and Bukhari. You'll find it very, very easily. What hadith is it? Uh, it's hadith. So, you're going to recite the word differently. It's going to come out. Who's that? Who says that? Someone here. Yeah, some of the no, I don't ministry know. people here. They keep on saying oh, different yeah. languages, but really, it's just a different <laughs> accent. <laughs> It's like you get different dialects in England. They're saying the same word. So it's here, uh, Bukhari, Sharif 9. Oh my goodness me. Which 32. one what do I write down? Was let, it, let, will let, I get let, this on the internet? You, you should do, yeah. If you go to, uh, let's see. Uh, there is a, uh, let's see if I can find the actual hadith where can I someone starting about uh, this, this is not the details. Of it. I realise how little I learn. I, I know actually. Well, if what if I type in something like woman it gets it's get, like, gets was, what, get paradise for for, for quenching the thirst of a dog? Actually, last time the brother, more knowledgeable brothers here. Let's have a look. Uh, let's see if I can see somebody. When, when were the hadiths written then? So we, the hadith were written very early on, but the most famous compilations are Bukhari 180 years after uh, Sahih Muslim and these were in the second century first and second century but they if you if you look at for example <coughs> how Bukhari was compiled he, he had over 300,000 hadith out of which he selected about two and a half thousand because his criteria for uh, confirming uh, without any doubt what, what was said was so he scrutinized it in such a way that he only selected a very, very few out of what he had. So, uh, let me have a look, actually. Sorry, I didn't, my name's Tim. What's your name? Willie. 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 Sorry, am I? Willie. Is that an Arabic name? Are you, are you, so if you, if you put that in, you'll find it. Prostitute gives water well, to God. That's what Rinda. Yeah, so you'll definitely find it. You're uh, a great already, man, Abbas. Well, no, 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 great no. What are there, all these things on you? That's what I want to know. These are all the microphones for the cameras. But the only thing I'd say to you, Tim, before you go. Yeah, I'll be back. It, it, yeah, please do. But all I would say to you is that there are some really good uh, websites that you can go to. Uh, one of them is uh, one of them is um, 
uh, one of them is Calling Christians. He's a good friend of mine, Ijaz. He runs that website, uh, Calling Christians. Yeah. And there, and if you, there's a lot of free call Christians. calling, call, oh, no, calling Christians. Yeah. yeah, Ijaz Ahmed is a very good website. But also, I would advise you, if you go to aira.org, they have a lot of free literature and free uh, books that they can send you. Uh, and also, uh, their Sapiens Institute, uh, they're very, very good as well. But but aira.org, I E R A dot org, they will have lots of free literature lots of free uh, uh, videos books and what have you and you'll be able to sort of you know get a better feeling I mean the, the, what's important is I don't mind you going to people who are of a Christian backing who actually have their own take on something but the only the, the, the best way is to ensure that you hear the uh, the intellectual the, the the educated Muslim speak about those points as well that's exactly where I'm going it's very important right that's the main place that I'm going well yeah. no, it's not the main it's definitely look if I want to have a discussion by the way I don't, what I don't quite get here is people getting up and shouting at one another and all that because I don't see how you can people just get their backs up yeah. and they don't so I don't really understand that um, yeah. I, I, this is only the second time but I think God's calling me here yeah. so that means I've got to be better that's good the but you know again before you go what I would say to you is that any book that has errors or contradictions in it at the very least has been changed we believe that the words of Jesus were indeed inspired by God Almighty as were the words of Moses, as were the words of uh, Noah or Abraham, they were inspired by God. Our argument is a simple one, which is actually in agreement with your own academics, that you don't have those words today. That's all we're saying. Right. And I, that's what, if you're here, the, well, you will, but you'd come We'll be here next here. week, hopefully. Well, actually, I won't be in there. I'm, okay. I'm, I've got to be with my wife's son. No so. problem. So, so next week we'll be here, but then we'll probably take a break for Ramadan. for Ramadan. So do you think there'll be no one here in Ramadan? They've put the, they, there are some Mashallah brothers here who come regardless, whether it's a hurricane, tornado, whether it's Ramadan, they're still here. Unfortunately, I'm not quite that strong. So uh, Ramadan, I'll probably take off, actually, to be honest. Yeah, okay, yeah. well... Many blessings on Tim, you. pleasure. Great, great to see you. All right. I'd love to go to Egypt. Boys, nice to Whereabouts are you from? Right. Boys. Boys. Microphones. Is that all of them?